Algebra 1, Unit 3, Day 1, Graphing Using Tables of Values and Graphing Linear Functions. In unit 3, we're going to discuss linear functions. You did some of this back in 8th grade, whether or not you remember it. So, starting off with some vocabulary. First off, an ordered pair is a coordinate point x, y. The x value always first, y always last or second. The x-axis is the horizontal or side-to-side -side axis. The y-axis is the vertical or up-and-down axis. Positive values for x go to the right. Negative values for x go to the left, just like a regular number line. For y, positive values go up and negative values go down. A linear function is a function with two variables, x, which is your input, and y, which is your output. And when you plot the relationship between these values, they graph onto a straight line, hence the name linear function. So let's discuss some of this. First off, what does it mean to solve for a specific coordinate pair to see if it is a solution to an equation? Well, what we're going to do is a coordinate pair, as we just said, is x comma y. So the first number in the coordinate pair is our x value. So we'll plug in or substitute the number negative 4 in problem 1 for our x. And then, similarly, we'll plug in our value for y. When we do this, 2 times negative 4 is negative 8, minus 3 times 3, which is 9. So we ask the question, is negative 8 minus 9 equal to negative 17? And the answer is yes. So yes, it is a solution. On number 2, does the point 2, 1 lie on the graph of y equals 3x minus 1? So this is actually asking the same question as number 1. Lying on the graph of that function is the same as being a solution to that equation. So the point 2, comma 1. Again, x is first and then y. So we'll put in 2 for x. We'll put in 1 for y. So does 1 equal 3 times 2 minus 1. Well, 3 times 2 is 6. So, 1 does not equal 5, and therefore the answer to this is no, not a solution. It does not lie on the graph. Number 3, graphing using a table of values. So this is often called a T table, because if you think about it, we draw a line underneath of our x and y. If we don't draw that outside box, we're really separating into the shape of a t. So we'll go ahead and we'll start picking values for x, which is our input, and solving for values of y, our output. So we'll take some negative values, 0, and some positive values, and plug them in. So first, we have negative 2 plus y equal to 4. We'll add 2 to each side. So y would have to be equal to 6. So at the point where x is negative 2, y will equal positive 6. A little bit off our graph. We could change the scale of our graph, but we won't for this specific example. Next, we'll try negative 1. Negative 1 plus y equals 4. We will solve for y by adding 1 to each side. So y equals 5. We'll go to negative 1 for x, up to 5 for y, and plot a point. We plug in 0 for x, y just equals 4. So again, 0 for x means the place where x is neither positive nor negative, and it's often called the origin for the x value. The origin is 0, comma 0, but then we have to go up to the y value, which is positive 4. So we'll go up 4 from the origin. And similarly, we would do the same thing to solve for 1 for x and 2 for x. 1 plus 3 is 4. 2 plus 2 is 4. 
So on the x, when x equals 1, y equals 3. When x equals 2, y equals 2. And then we draw our line. Now while I stopped doing my number table between negative 2 and 2, I stopped at negative 2 all the way to the left, I stopped at positive 2 all the way to the right, but the line continues for all values of x, we're going to get an output for y. Again, using a table of values. I always put 0 in the middle, minus 2, minus 1, 1, 2. Sometimes you will vary what you use for x, like for example if there was a fraction and it was x over 2, I would try to use even numbers as my input for x so that I could get rid of the fraction when I solve for y. So f of x means a function of x. We often use that instead of saying y, but that's the axis we're going to put f of x on is the y axis. So we'll plug in f of negative 2, evaluating this line at the point where x equals 2. Note, it's an f of x, a function of x, so the only variable on the right side is x. So we plug in negative 2, and we solve. That's negative 4 minus 1, which is negative 5. And that is my f of x value, or also what I will plot as y. So when x is negative 2, I come 2 to the left of the origin on the x-axis. And then y, or f of x, is negative 5, so I go down 5. And now we'll do f of negative 1. f of negative 1 equals 2 times negative 1 minus 1. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. So I go 1 to the left to get to x equal negative 1, and I go down 1, 2, 3. If I put in 0 for x, f of x just equals negative 1. So when x equals 0, where the y-axis crosses, we go down 1. Now, we continue writing our table, but you really only need two points to define a line. I always like a third one just to make sure it's being consistent. Well, what we'll see is 2 times 1 is 2, minus 1 is 1. So when x equals 1, y equals 1, or f of x equals 1 f of 2 is 2 times 2 minus 1. 2 times x, where x is 2, is 4. Minus 1 is 3. That's how we're using a t-table to solve or to graph a linear equation. The other thing that hopefully you remember from 8th grade was the linear equation. That is of the form the slope value times our x plus our intercept value equals our output for y. I'm sure we'll get into that in a little bit. For a horizontal line, a line that goes from left to right, will be of the form y equals just a number. A vertical line will go straight up and down through a place where x equals a number. So we're going to graph some horizontal and vertical lines next. So first, y equals negative 3. Again, x is the horizontal or side-to-side -side axis, and y is the vertical or up and down axis. So we're going to go to y equals minus 3. 1, 2, 3, in the negative direction. So that's y equals negative 3 when x equals 0. But it doesn't tell us anything else about x. So that really means that y equals negative 3 for any value of x. 
when x is 2, y is negative 3. When x is 4, y is negative 3. When x is negative, y is negative 3. So that is a horizontal line where y is at negative 3. Now x equals 2, we go over to, from the origin, we go right 1, 2 on our x-axis. And that's true whether x, whether y is 0, 2, 4, negative 2, or negative 4, or anywhere in between. So for all values of y, x, for this example, equals 2. Now we're going to find a way to draw this using a table of values. Our t table is back again. So f of x equals 4. Well, once again, I'll write out my t table. So when x equals negative 2, what's f of x? 4. When x equals negative 1, f of x is 4. It's 4 for 0, it's 4 for 1, it's 4 for 2, it's 4 for any value of x. So we'll go ahead and draw this in, f of x. For any value of x, when x equals 0, f of x, 4. When x equals negative 2, f of x, 4. When x equals negative 1, 1, 2, or any other value in this example, our f of x, or y output value, is 4. Next, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2 for our values of x. And then we'll just plug them in each time. So, negative 2 for x, 2 times negative 2 plus y equals 3. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. So to get rid of that, on the left side, I'll add it. And 4 to both sides. So on the left I now have y, and on the right I have 7. That's a little bit off our graph. Let's see how we do with negative 1. When x equals negative 1, we'll have 2 times negative 1 plus y equals 3. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 plus y equals 3. So we'll add 2 to each side to get rid of that negative 2. So y equals 5. Now we can actually, if we take a look at our table, we can see what that coefficient of x is really doing. It means that each step up, we're adding 2. For each 1 increase in x, y increases by 2. When x is 0, 2 times 0 is 0, plus y equals 3. 0 plus y equals 3, therefore y must be 3. That's also our intercept, what we call the y-intercept. x equals 0, y equals 3. When x was negative 1, y was positive 5. When x is 1, 2 times 1 plus y equals 3. This time I have a positive 2. To get rid of it, I have to subtract 2 away. So y will equal 1. And again, actually that should be minus 2 each step along the way. So we'll go over here to x equals 1, y is 1. x is 2, y is minus 1. And then we just connect our dots. So when I have a number that goes off of my graph, I can kind of estimate it up here somewhere. Or I can change the scale of my graph. Or I can just find a couple of other answers that are on my graph and plot them since it'll be a straight line everywhere. Now, your turn. Go ahead and pause the video and plot what it looks like when x equals negative 2. Okay, so when you plot this, what you should see x is negative 2, x is negative 2, x is negative 2, x is negative 2, x is always negative 2 for this function, and it doesn't matter if y is negative, positive, or 0, x will be negative 2. 
for y equals x on b. Go ahead and pause the video after you write in your values for x. Find your values for y. Okay, so since y equals x, this says f of x, which is really the same as y for this example. So we probably should have written y on our chart. We'll just go ahead and say, well, if x is negative 2 and y is equal to x, then y is negative 2. If x is negative 1, y is negative 1, etc., etc., etc. So what does that look like? Well, we can plot 0, 0 pretty easy. So we'll put that first. So this is going to go through the origin. When x is negative 2, 2 to the left of the origin, y is negative 2, 2 below the origin. When x is negative 1, 1 to the left of the origin, y is negative 1, 1 below the origin, etc. On the right, positive 1, positive 1, positive 2, positive 2, and what we see is a diagonal line crossing through from lower left to upper right. And that ends our day one video. Thank you.